Mobile County Public Schools presents Homeroom. Hi, and welcome to Homeroom, where we introduce you to the students and the educators who make Mobile County Public Schools the best school district in the state of Alabama. I'm your host, Renee Phillips, and today we're going to be talking about some of our graduates. Because as you know, in Mobile County Public Schools, we pride ourselves on the fact that we are learning today, leading tomorrow. And we have lots of success stories. I hope you've been able to see our magazine. If not, it's available around town on our website also. But we've featured some of our graduates in here as well as on our Facebook page. So we're going to talk to a couple of those graduates today. So first I have joining us from the University of Mobile, Beverly Collier. Hi, Beverly. Hi, good morning. Hi. So you are a 2014 graduate of Theodore High School and you've been one of our success stories because you went through the healthcare academy there and now you teach nursing at the University of Mobile. So tell us, how yes. did you get to that point? So I graduated in 2014, um, like you said. I went directly into um, college at the University of Mobile. <clears throat> I did four years, um, two years of prereqs. I went into nursing school for two years and graduated in 2018. Um, from there, I started working in the hospital. I worked in a critical care unit um, for about a year before I decided to go back to get my master's um, in nursing education. So at the bedside, I had the opportunity to teach nursing students who were coming through for clinical or practical students. Um, so those are nursing students who are about to graduate nursing school. Um, I had a few orientees that I was able to teach. Um, so I really fell in love with the teaching aspect of nursing. Um, so I decided to go back. Of course, I chose UM because I had such a great experience um, getting my BSN, my undergrad from UM. So I started back and I graduated with my MSN in um, December of 2020. Um, I adjunct for a little while, so I taught part-time. I stayed working full-time in the hospital while getting my master's. Um, and then I started adjuncting the following January. Um, and I have been full-time since August of 2021. So I'm rounding up my first year of teaching um, and it has been such a great journey. Um, of course, I, I'm now teaching at the University of Mobile. So um, you can see I truly love this university um, and nursing and teaching. So it's been, it's been a long, fun journey for sure. Well, congratulations. And really your career has come full circle because you started learning in our classroom and now you're teaching. Um, and so Correct. what was it about the healthcare academy at Theodore that attracted you to this profession? So um, throughout my time in the healthcare profession, I learned um, lots of different things about nursing. We learned skills, we learned terminology, um, all of those things which I still use today, which I think is great. You know, sometimes in, in high school you think, man, these courses, I'm never going to learn this again. Well, throughout the Healthcare Academy, everything that I learned, I have carried with me. It's been beneficial throughout my time in the hospital. And those are some of the same things I'm teaching my students now. Um, so it's definitely come full circle. Um, besides the skills and the terminology, I think the Healthcare Academy really prepared me um, as far as being professional, um, learning to communicate. That's one really difficult aspect of nursing that most people don't really think about is how do you communicate? Um, we have to communicate with children, with families, with um, those that are very sick. Um, so communication becomes a really important factor of nursing. And I think that along with being professional is something that I have really taken away from the Healthcare Academy um, and carried with me and again, teach to my students now. And I agree because you said that you were working in a cardiac intensive care unit and I'm sure that when a patient is in that type of situation, it's, it's stressful for them and for their families. And so how is it important that you learn not only those scientific healthcare traits um, of a nurse, but also how to just be there and, and talk to people and make them feel more at ease? Right. So it's very important and I always say nursing is only a little portion of learning skills. 
um, learning skills, learning medication, that's only a little portion of it because you were at the bedside for 12 plus hours during a shift and you were with sick patients and, and worried family members. So really learning to communicate and um, learning how to navigate through um, a shift with education and um, uh, just being there as a patient advocate is, is really important. And at Theodore, were you able to earn your CNA? Yes, I did. I graduated with my CNA. Um, I worked as a care tech in the hospital um, while I was in nursing school, which I think is extremely beneficial. And I encourage anyone who is even interested in the healthcare field to work as a CNA um, or nursing assistant for a little while because you really get your foot in the door um, and really involve yourself into the um, healthcare world and inside of the hospital. So it's super beneficial. Right, and I know hundreds of our students get that CNA. It's a certified nursing assistant, and so they can go to work immediately. And I, I know one thing about um, being able to earn that is it teaches you whether you really want to do this as your profession, doesn't it? It gives you those hands-on practices? Correct, yes, yes. So would you, would you say that Theodore High School prepared you pretty well for this? You, you look like you're, you're doing a great job. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, and it prepared me as far as education and skills and, and learning medical things. But again, also just really how to be a professional and kind of how to carry yourself through the healthcare field. Um, and along with the teaching side of it, my um, instructor was Miss Jamie Hovell um, at Theodore. And not only was she teaching me these things about nursing, but she was also a mentor um, and somebody I could confide in and talk with. If, if something I was worried about or stressed out about, um, I could talk with her with. And I think that makes a big difference as well, um, who your instructor is and, and kind of how they carry you through those courses. Um, and looking back now, Maybe at the time I didn't realize it, but looking back now, um, I can see how much of an impact um, Ms. Hovell had on me during school, as well as now that I'm an instructor. Um, so I certainly strive to be an instructor like her, as well as be a mentor to my students, just as she was to me. That is great to hear. It's so great when you have an in a mentor like that, and I know that you're doing a great job in turn being a mentor to other students at the University of Mobile. So congratulations on all of your successes. We are very proud of you. We have to break for Thank commercial, so and when we come back, we're gonna introduce you to some more of our success stories who have graduated from Mobile County Public Schools. So stay tuned for Homeroom. As a student in the Mobile County Public Schools, there are a few things I've come to expect. One is a quality education, and the other is a quality lunch. Not only are our school meals well balanced, meeting all federal nutritional standards, but they also have less fat, fewer calories, and they taste really good. Oh, and I forgot to mention, our school lunches contain whole wheat, grains, fruits, and vegetables to give me the energy and brain power to get me through the day. Hi, and welcome back to Homeroom. Today we are meeting some of our success stories. These are graduates from Mobile County Public Schools who have gone on to do great things in their careers, even at a young age. So joining us, I have Chris Peng Sis Um Boom, who was the valedictorian actually of Bryant High School in 2014. So congratulations on that. So tell us about your journey. What happened after Bryant? Yeah, so um, after attending Bryant High School, I went directly to the University of Alabama. Um, while I was there, I was definitely missing performing. I started um, an organization at Bryant High School called Category 6, uh, which is just an elite performance ensemble out of their choral department. And I missed it so much that I had to come back and mentor in person in Mobile. The opportunities um, that sort of come out of Category 6 was involvement with uh, an internship program that got me an internship with the Recording Academy, which is the company that puts on the Grammys. I interned with them in 2018 and have kind of gone from intern to full-time employee, and that's where I am currently. 
<laughs> so you went from singing in the choir at Bryant High School to encouraging other students to get involved in choir and show choir through founding of the Category 6 show choir. Mm -hmm. And now you're in Nashville, actually, uh, and, and yes. you get to work with some big names and, and help with the Grammy. So that really did help with your career, didn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, honestly, in this particular line of work, I don't think anything can truly prepare you, especially when you have the opportunity to meet some of your idols. Uh, but I think, you know, being able to operate behind the scenes for different, you know, productions and things like that, especially for choir productions, it, it teaches you how to, you know, maintain your composure and be professional. So it definitely prepared me. <laughs> And this is a hard field to break into, isn't it? Um, it sounds like you're doing really well, but do you have any advice for students on, on how they can get into a job like yours? I always recommend um, trying to diversify your professional portfolio. Um, and that's like a big, a big phrase, but all that really means is if, you know, you want to break into music show that you are dedicated to music. So I don't have a music industry degree, which is usually required to be in this industry. Um, but I have a communications degree and I showed, you know, continuously that I was interested in music. I founded category six. I was volunteering for different music festivals. Um, I flew across the country to volunteer in one just like to get my name out there. Um, so it, it really just, it depends on how dedicated you are to um, breaking into the industry as to whether or not you'll actually make it. So I definitely encourage everyone to do that. So the academics that you learned are very important and I didn't even know there was a degree called a music industry degree, but so are those um, extracurriculars that you do, right? Like the singing in the choir, they're performing and, and putting on the, the behind the scenes efforts as well, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And I always tell people that, you know, when you're doing your resume, that as long as you achieve like a sort of leadership role or, you know, take on some really important responsibilities, you can spin it any way um, in order to, you know, kind of push your music industry agenda. So if you're a member of NHS and you're an officer, just like show how the duties that you have as an NHS officer, um, you know, could really translate into a music industry position when you go out for these internships or these jobs. And um, if you're a big social media guru, like show how you can garner fan engagement and how you maintain those profiles. It's, it's, it's really interesting, but uh, it, it works. <laughs> And we teach our students too to be careful what they do on social media, like have an active presence, but be careful because anything that you post Absolutely. could be used by someone that you're um, interviewing for a job. They, they may not like what they see. But um, tell me, what's it like working for the Grammys? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> I've been here since, like I said, 2018 consecutively. Uh, the company has been so gracious to me. I um, was able to, you know, temp just so I could stay on board. And then I was able to work part time in a position that would typically be full time until I graduated. And so working for the company in general has been amazing. The opportunities that have come out of it, the people I've gotten to meet, Tori Kelly is like one of my biggest idols. And um, one of my uh, directors, uh, when I was interning, she was like, surprise, we're going to see Tori Kelly tonight. So we got to go backstage and hang out with her and her husband. And, um, it, it's just, it's been amazing and I'm also um, on a founding team for a new entity for the Recording Academy called the Songwriters and Composers Wing and I'm one of three team members um, on that team and so you know being Asian American and being on that founding team is absolutely absolutely monumental and I'm proud of that. <laughs> That is definitely something to be proud of. And I know that um, like with the Grammys, you're showcasing the professional work of other individuals. So is that just neat to be a part of that you get to be behind the scenes and, and make them help them to look good and sound good and all that? Uh, absolutely. And I'm not going to take any credit and say I make anyone look or sound good in that regard. It's all them. But um, I think it's also really interesting that I'm able to inform not only my peers, but, you know, the public, too, that people I don't know as well, that this uh, Grammy Awards process, like it's a peer to peer voting process. A lot of people think like, oh, why didn't this person win or my artist was or my favorite artist was robbed, whatever. But, um, you know, this is a peer to peer based award. These are creatives voting on the works of other creatives. Um, 
and crafts that the world burst in. So it, it's really cool to, you know, get that insight and then be able to share it with people so that they can know. So are there any other famous people that you've met? Any stories you can share? <laughs> um, I think <laughs> I have some very interesting stories, but we might have to take that offline. <laughs> <laughs> Part of your profession is being discreet, right? <laughs> Oh, of course, of course. You sign sign an agreement for everything, but um, it's really to just, and that's the main thing I encourage anyone, is to understand that when you're working in the music industry, as much as, you know, you can get those starry eyes and, you know, be excited to be in a room with people that you've looked up to forever, at the end of the day, they're people, you know, they um, deserve that mutual respect and that privacy that, you know, you do. And, um as something that I definitely recommend, like getting a grasp of before you decide to pursue uh, any sort of opportunity in entertainment. That's great advice. So do you feel like Bryant prepared you for this? I do. I was actually um, at Bryant High School probably a week or two ago giving a sort of TED talk, I guess you'd say. Um, and, you know, I would say that I was at Alan Bryant High School at like the turning of time. I, I don't know if that's how you would phrase it, but um, a lot of opportunities came to Alan Bryant High School after I left. And, you know, of course, there were always people at MCPSS and people at Bryant High School in general to make it happen. But, um, you know, right when I left, a lot of opportunities arose. And I think not having as many opportunities at Alma Bryant High School really pushed me to create opportunities for other people. So in a really weird way, yeah, I would say that prepared me more than anything. And that's great that you have, your legacy lives on in this category six show choir. Well, thank you for joining us. We're proud of you. Next time we watch the Grammys, we will know that a Bryant High School graduate is, is helping to put on the show. So we have to break for commercial. Yes. So stay tuned for Homeroom. When parents are involved in school, they get more of this and less of this. Welcome back to Homeroom, where today I'm introducing you to some of our graduates who are success stories. They're going out and doing great things. So joining us for this segment, I have Wynn Gustin, who is a 2016 graduate of Murphy High School. He is joining us from Boston University, where he is in law school. So tell us, how did you get to where you are now? Hi, so uh, I, was, I really love the Boston area, and I had a great time uh, at Murphy. And so law school is something that I've been thinking about while I was at Murphy um, and I participated in a few judicial interests in Mobile, got to like shadow um, some judges and the district attorney um, and that law school would be right for me and it just worked out at Boston University and so um, I've been having a great time here. It's a lot colder though. <laughs> you were telling me it was 40 to 50 the other day and that felt good. That felt warm. Yeah, that's right. So um, before you went there, you were at Washington and Lee University. What did you study there? I studied in European history and creative writing. Um, I also did a lot of work with the digital humanities, which is like blending, I think, history and English and foreign languages with, I think, newer technology. And uh, we worked on the Lawrence As It Was project, which is basically digitally recreating the entire city of Florence. Um, I had an amazing time at Washington and Lee in Virginia. That sounds fascinating. I've never heard of digital humanities before. Um, and so when you were at Murphy, I understand you took a lot of advanced placement courses. So do you feel like those prepared you for college and for law school? Absolutely. Murphy had a very rigorous AP program. Um, I was through the program. I was able to take two classes off college. And so I had my, I think my history and my English classes already squared away so I could focus on doing what I really wanted to do. Um, that was, was just wonderful and it saved me a lot of time. Um, I also, the AP program at Murphy focused a lot on writing. Um, I distinctly remember a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with my teachers at Murphy. I think really like that writing movement really set me on a great path towards law school now. Um, I just, I had an amazing time and the teachers in the AM at Murphy were just phenomenal. 
you have a quote in our magazine that I love, so I'm going to read it. It says, at Murphy, I learned the value of having teachers who deeply cared, not only about your performance in class, but also your personal development and growth into a future career. How important is that for a teenager to have those teachers that they can look up to and, and, and grow with? It is so important. That kind of like mentorship is what is really important to me. What I've found really, I think, defining about here and about an education because can't it, none of this is going to be able to be individually. We have to have, I think, guidance, people who have more experience and uh, the education to set us on that path. Um, yeah, and then those those at Murphy, you know, I I had a recommendation from them, and they, you know, it's it was a great direction for for college and law school. And I know it's, it's great when the teachers can be mentors um, professionally, but also you learn those academics. You also said that they taught you about the on outlying methods that you learned in AP English and how that has helped you. What is an outlying method? How did, how did you learn that? Yeah, so law school, it's, it's a, such a whirlwind, and you're in these classes, and you're getting at so much information, and you're reading so many cases. Probably I read like 400-ish pages every week or two. Um, and so being like proper note is one of the most important skills in law. And in my AP U.S. history class, our teacher, Mrs. Booth, uh, taught us, I think, the Cornell note-taking method, uh, which is like, it's, it focuses on, I think, organization as you're taking the notes. And that is so important for reading huge wealth of information that you have to learn. Right, so it helps you organize your thoughts and retain it as well. And so who would have thought all that writing would come in handy, right? Exactly, yeah. And so what advice do you have for high school students now on how they can prepare for, for college or career or whatever they're going to do in the future? I would definitely say don't limit yourself. I think since at any uh, school, mobile public school system, is set up to, I think, go wherever they want. Um, all that, it, it just, I think it just matters to figure out um, your options. You know, like, and then to have guidance from teachers and from counselors to show you what those options could be, because, you know, you're, you're, not, you're not restricted. You can do, um, you can go where you want. Um, the skills you learn at Murphy and other mobile public schools are transferable in any career and really can set you up for um, some uh, just you know don't, don't don't limit yourself and work really hard and um, I think aired to kind of um, I think learn some professional development to uh, even while you're in high school you know I think networking early on is one of the best, best things you can do and that's good advice. I know at Murphy, we talk about the Panther pride. So are you proud to be a Murphy Panther? Are you glad that's where you went to school? Absolutely. I have so much pride for Murphy. Um, we had, had a, I think I was there during the, um, my freshman year, we had the twit hit uh, Murphy. And I, you know, I, I developed a, like a real love for the school as it transformed into the, you know, into the place and institution that it is now. Um, I still keep up with my teachers, and I have so many, like, great memories at Murphy. Yeah, the tornado was devastating, but have you been able to make it back after they've renovated the buildings and gotten it back into shape? I have. It is astounding, the work that they do, they've done. It's a modern, um, bright, and air institution now. Um, I've, you know, I'd like them back again this summer, um, but, but it's, it's just amazing what they've done with the place. So what do you want to do when you finish law school? I'm thinking of probably working with a firm. Um, I, this last year, I worked with a firm in Mobile, uh, Burforman. Um, I'm also considering uh, clerking for a, this summer. I'll be in Mobile uh, clerking and interning for uh, the district judge in the federal court, uh, Terry F. Moore. Um, I'm really excited for that experience. Um, I think my options are open. You know, it's it's um, there's there's so many things you can do with a degree that um, 
I'm just really excited about uh, learning about all, all my options. It sounds like you have lots of great options. We're proud of you. Keep up the good work. We have to break for commercial, and when we come back, I'm going to tell you about some more of our success stories who have graduated from Mobile County Public Schools. So stay tuned for Homeroom. When parents are involved in school, you get more of this and less of this. Welcome back to Homeroom. Today we have met some of our success stories who have graduated from our Mobile County Public Schools. You can read about some more of them in our Learning Leading Magazine, but I want to tell you about some of our graduates from our other high schools in Mobile County Public Schools. So first, Jalexis Wells, a 2017 Viger High School graduate, knew at an early age that she wanted to become a nurse. That was due to her having to be hospitalized for a week. She said, during this time I met a nurse who was selfless, compassionate, and embodied everything I inspired to become. At Viger, she took advantage of the Stars and Stripes summer program at the University of South Alabama. She was a shadow nurse at Spring Hill Medical Center, and she went on to earn a nursing degree from the University of Southern Mississippi. She's now an emergency room registered nurse with Emory Healthcare in Atlanta. Jarvis Davis is a graduate of Davidson High School's engineering program in 2016. He earned a degree in computer science from Alabama A&M and is working cybersecurity for the Department of Defense. He said that EPIC program at Davidson was his first true STEM experience and it forced him to think with an engineering mindset. Pairing that with the honors program truly got him ready for his career in cybersecurity. Next, we have Alexandria Eubanks, LaFleur High School's 2016 valedictorian. She graduated from Birmingham Southern College with a bachelor's degree in biology and a minor in chemistry. She was recently accepted to the Meharry Medical College's Master of Health Science program, where she will study to become a dermatologist. She said that LaFleur's healthcare program and her work with her peers there helped to strengthen her communication skills um, and get over an introverted personality so she can be out there comfortable with networking and self-advocacy. From Blunt High School's class of 2008, the salutatorian Dr. Jamila McKinnis Riley. She earned a doctorate of dental surgery from Meharry Medical College in Nashville. She recently moved back to Mobile where she is practicing dentistry at Smile Center, Inc. She said that Blunt Signature Academy was her first introduction to the medical field. She was able to explore different careers within healthcare and received instruction and mentorship from instructors with experience in the field. And from MGM, we have Bryant, Brant Cook, a 2017 graduate who went on to earn a degree in criminal justice and political science from the University of South Alabama. He is now in law school at the University of Alabama with the goal to become a public interest lawyer and protect the rights of the marginalized. And then we have Starla Pierce, who started a career at Autocompu after interning with the Stainless Steel Company as a sophomore at Citronelle High School. She started as an entry lab technician upon graduation from Citronelle's Academy of Manufacturing and has been with the company for seven years, advancing to advanced laboratory technician at the Melt Shop and Physical Testing. You can read more about these graduates in our magazine and on the Mobile County Public Schools Facebook page. Thank you so much for joining us for Homeroom. We'll see you next time.